Hey, you entrepreneurs. Today we have Ryan Lipsy and Haley Collier. They are title reps or title representatives, however you want to call them, with Tycor Title. They have a passion for title. They have a passion for people. They have a passion for helping people out, help people grow. You're going to want to listen. You're going to want to subscribe. And hey, of course, you're going to want to tell your friends. Thanks, guys. Welcome to the road to growth, success of an entrepreneur. We've raised the bar. Learn firsthand from successful business owners and create your own path to success. I'm going to show you how great I am. It's time to hit the road to growth with real estate agent Vinny SD. All right. We are here with Ryan Lipsy and Haley Collier. How you guys doing? Hi, Vinny. Good. How What's up, you? Vinny? Hey. <laughs> Put this in the middle. There Happy to be here. Thanks for having us, man. All right, so you guys are title reps, representatives for real estate, in essence. The simplest way to describe it, correct? Right, I would say so. So yeah. Yeah. We, I like, after... we like to think of ourselves as a little more than that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I think we're more of like business-to-business -business consultants, strate okay. Is, strategic it, partners, that type of thing. So if you had an elevator pitch, how would you describe it? Like, So if you're, you're in the elevator, I get in the elevator, I have no clue. What do you do for a living, sir? Yeah, well, we do settlement services in the real estate space. So that oh. usually looks like title, escrow. When you buy or sell or refi or restructure debt on a building, you need title and escrow. Well, that's a better elevator pitch than I would have had for you guys. Oh. <laughs> Ensuring the buyer or borrower free of any free and clear of any judgments or liens prior to it entering the property or refinancing it. Kind right. of the dumbed down version. Wow. Well done. Yeah, I, I don't want to be rude, Haley, but I think Ryan had a better elevator. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Sorry. That's okay. Mine's the dumb, that's what I was like. Mine's the dumbed down version of it. Well, the reason we're, we're two partners are the same, one is not necessary. <laughs> so... Was this always your guys' dream to be in, in this field? No. God, no. I wanted to be... <laughs> <Is it> anybody's <laughs> dream? <laughs> like, I wanted to be Ernest Hemingway minus the shotgun. You know, I, oh, was, wow. I thought I was going to write the great American novel. I was an English major, maybe even screenplays. Um, I love to read, always have, you know, and so that's where some of my creativity comes from. But then I had a brother in the business and saw some of his, um, you know, the results and the production from being in a sales position and definitely you know changed the course of history so to speak or changed my course way anyway and I got into title got sort of loved working with people and loved helping people build a, their business so that's how I got the title how about you and then well I kind of got dragged into it yeah. <laughs> unwillingly I actually wanted for years ever since I was a girl I wanted to be a corporate attorney that's what I wanted to go to school for wanted to get into law and ended up when I got into college, I started taking my, you know, the general ed business classes. And my mom, she's been in the real estate space for over 30 years. And she kind of was like, hey, I know this title company and they're hiring for a receptionist. And at this point I was like 20 and I was like, okay, like making $17 an hour full-time benefits. That was more than a lot of people, like my friends in college at that time. So I was like, sure, I'll try it out. And within a year I got promoted in the company, got on a title desk and then was like, what happened to school? <laughs> it's gone, and now, I mean, it's totally flourished though, and I've definitely found like my calling, my passion. I could not imagine being a corporate attorney at this point, or even being behind a desk at any time. Uh, so. <laughs> I know, I walked into Tycor, I had recently switched companies, and I saw this like shining star, radiant energy, and it was chained to a desk, and I realized like, that's a salesperson masquerading as a title clerk, and that was Haley before she joined my team. I was going to say, though, it took about 16 times of me bumping into Ryan in the break room. I Like he said, he switched over from his company, so there was a lot of moving parts, and I could tell he was just a super busy man, legitimately always on the phone. Any point I saw him on the hallway, looking at his texts, like, and I, every time I saw him, I'm like, I know you're busy. I know you need an assistant. I want to meet with you, and that was probably about 16 times, and he finally was like, I have time after work today at six o'clock. Can you meet me at Starbucks? And we were there for what, like two was hours? Was it that many times? Was it like north of uh, 10 times? It was like, pretty, I feel like it was aggressive. <laughs> I feel like it was for, very Which persistent. Is, if you're hiring for a sales <laughs> assistant, that's kind of what you want, right? Yeah. I, feel like yeah. I was very persistent in that follow up. Um, but we were at Starbucks for what, like two hours? Like, and it was quite a while at Starbucks. And we were like, 
Yeah. This is, we're going to do this. We, we, we solved all the world's problems, and then I, I walked out of there with a new team member. It was awesome. Yeah. So it was you, meant to be. you knew that you were looking for, for someone, or was it kind of looking for someone? Or Well, I had a team of three at the previous company, and I became a team of one, like involuntarily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all good. You know, it's, uh, they, they've gone on, and I'm sure are doing wonderful things out there. I was very fortunate because I get, was able to find Katie. Uh, she's the third partner to this whole disaster and chaotic <laughs> team, but she's mission control. She's the brain, you know. And um, Haley came along, and it's we are ten times as effective as we were at the previous company, and so I'm mm. really blessed for that. But also, I'm a lot closer, you know, in terms of like a family type atmosphere on our mm -hmm. team and friendship wise. They were just hanging out with my wife last night. We all kind of get along. We had a big event. Kind of get along? We all get along. I mean, we all kind of get along. Well, like, we seek each other out. And that's not always the case in a professional setting, you know? Mm -hmm. But, like, I, we ride around, do a lot of consults. We do a lot of working close in close quarters, Haley and I. And we actually become really, really good friends. So I'm, I'm grateful that mm -hmm. things went down the way they did. So going back to you were looking to be a writer in that kind of field. Yeah. Right? So were you an introvert back in high school, or have you always been kind of more of an extrovert? Oh, God. Yeah, no. Introvert and Ryan Lipsy have never been put in the same sentence. I was <laughs> extroverted. I was just borderline bipolar crazy, four-year letterman, thought I was the hot stuff in the room when any room I walked into. So, you know, I've you come. what? <laughs> Thank God I was able to take the ego out back and shoot it years ago, but that wasn't always the case. No, I've always been the loud guy, mostly because it was a shield for insecurity for many years, you know, and inside I would guide and um, – like I said, shield certain f fears and insecurities by being loud and bolsterous and, and kind of in your face, you know, and extroverted. But uh, but now I'm just I just get to be my authentic self. So mm -hmm. what was what was the why was the passion behind writing? Where did that come from? You know, I, I just think I liked the third person storytelling element of it and being able to go anywhere in the world. Like I like uh, my favorite book is. The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway about Jake Barnes and Unrequited Love and it takes place in Spain. It's got bull riders in it. It's got drunken like freaking shenanigans in it. It's an awesome book but it's a book about life, you know, and, and as many times as I read the book, which is like 10 times, the book changed but I know the book wasn't changing. It was me the changing mm -hmm. and to have that kind of impact on somebody's life I thought was profound and I wanted to replicate it. So how does that, how does that mindset correlate with your current profession? Well, I can bring my story and my experience to bear in the lives of others and have them learn lessons vicariously through me and vice versa, right? You know, like we're becoming friends, you know, and there's a lot to your story that is our parallels in our past and a lot that I never knew about you and I'm learning about you all the time and I can add that to my experience. I think it, um, we benefit from really getting deeper and getting into relationship with one each other, one another, and learning from each other's stories. That's mm -hmm. kind of how I see those two things correlating. And we come into contact with hundreds of people a week, yeah. so that's like an infinite amount of stories I get mm -hmm. to benefit from being experiencing. Totally. With all honesty, if you're coming with a hundred people on a weekly basis, how many names do you actually remember? I, you know, I, <laughs> a good portion of them, but I've gotten pretty good. Like, there he is, and yeah. now it's a party, and like. <laughs> or he'll give me the look, like, and I'm like, text it to you. Who yeah. Or I'll be like. I'll just, uh, my go-to is like, you've met Haley, right? <laughs> and, then, and then they usually introduce themselves. And then so. But I mean, I, I'm, I'm not the best with names, admittedly so, but I use, you know, I know a good portion of them. Mm -hmm. I, think. I think it's better if you know the face you're like oh yeah you and then you start coming and then the name gets brought up at some point and you're like and it clicks you're like oh yeah that's who that is yeah yeah, yeah. Like, there he is there he oh, is yeah. you start putting the pieces together after you actually having the conversation you're like oh my gosh this puzzle's going on my head who is this person are you running that too oh I run it all the time yeah nice. I live and die with my CRM really oh, you have to mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things that I'll see people and I'm like I have no clue who this person is but they seem very nice Mm -hmm. Or they seem to know you 100%, yeah, and they're yeah, like, oh, it's so good to see you again, then, Vinny, and you're like, oh, yeah. But then the opposite happens. Actually, one of my one of my friends, he does it. He'll actually be very conf overly confident to people, randomly people. Like, he has no clue who they are. Like, oh, my gosh, how have you been? And most people will play along with it. They'll be like, <laughs> like oh, gosh, yeah, you. I, uh, what's your name again? And I'm like, he'll Ryan Lipson, <laughs> how are you not involved with me? I, you know, I, I find myself saying it's good to see you again yeah. a lot. 
because I don't know. I, I've in, I've introduced myself to people for the fourth time, like yeah. way too many times. So yeah. you just you kind of you know learn that. I yeah, mean, you got to switch it up a little bit after people are like, yeah, I've met you like three times. You're like, oh. Or you have to do something that's very <laughs> out of the ordinary. Or you basically, you know what I mean, take your shoe off and give it to him or Just something random. They go, oh, you're the guy that does the shoe thing. You're the shoe guy. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're the shoe guy. Please yeah. don't. Don't <laughs> take off your shoes. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to unleash the swamp for <laughs> Yeah, and people might leave. We might not have clients after that. <laughs> oh, my God. It's just that, I mean, we're nothing special. We just, we prospect a lot. Yeah. You know, we come into contact a lot. And we do the same. We live and die in our CRM. So I'm way familiar with seeing people's names yeah. versus coming in contact with face-to-face. -face. So it's, I, you know, I talk to people so much over the phone and over emails and stuff that when I finally do meet people, I'm like, oh, that's who you are. Yeah. I know you. That's the so, cool part about doing events. Like, we mm -hmm. had a probably 100-person event last night. Yeah. And a lot of people don't meet Katie because Katie is largely behind the scenes. And yeah. then a lot of people got to meet her last night. Like, oh, my God, you're Katie. It was great. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. Now, with you, Haley, so you were in – or you were thinking about, like, corporate attorney mm -hmm. and that kind of field. What – why was that? Why was the corporate – corporate your, your go-to? You know, I've always been very just intrigued about businesses and that kind of, you know, CEOs and CFOs and that kind of rundown and that structure. And growing up as a kid, you know, we hear it all the time from our parents, like, you're really freaking good at arguing. <laughs> so I was a kid who really did not like to be told no. And if you kind of told me no, I'd figure out my way to make it happen and kind of just make things work and so my mom always was like Haley you should be an attorney like you know how to argue you know how to get what you want that's your field and that's your like that's where I see you going and you know I got into school once I got into college I kind of was like I don't see myself doing this like this isn't where I want to go and my mom's always been in the real estate space and I've always been intrigued with that about real estate and the market and just how it's always moving and changing and so when I got offered the position with title, I was like, I had no idea what title insurance was, no clue. And I was like, sure, let's try it out. And then once I saw how the sales part of it worked, I, I knew the second as I was the receptionist, seeing how the sales part of it worked, I was like, I want to be there one day. Like, that's where my goal is. So honestly, how long did your mom cry when she found out she wasn't going to have a daughter as an attorney? <laughs> <laughs> honestly I think she was way more excited for me to get into real estate because that's her passion and yeah. she's been in real estate for 30 years so now we have a really good common ground we're always calling and talking to each other about different files and issues she's working on to see if there's something I can help her with and vice versa so we've really kind of established a lot better of a relationship now really? that yeah, closer? yeah now that I'm in real estate and I mean you met my mom last night got to hang out with she's her she's awesome <laughs> like you know Linda and, Rock. <laughs> so it I think it's definitely helped. Um, I I think she sees it now too, where she was like, "What was I thinking? You would have not made a good attorney." <laughs> like, I, think we all agree on no, that. I mean, I'm very I'm very persuasive. I think I can definitely be persuasive, but um, this is way more of my calling and my passion, and what I I wake up every day happy to go to work. So. Okay, being that you're so persuasive, what was the last thing that you were able to sell Ryan on doing that he didn't want to do? Going to caravans? Are we going to start that? <laughs> well, it might have been that big event we did at Seth's listing yes, last night. I kind of yeah. wasn't all in on that one, but yeah. it turned out great. Yeah, he wasn't all in on that, and I was like, you know what? It's going to be a good event. Let's do it. He did have to, you know, pull some weight at 7 in the morning this morning, getting uh, in there and helping clean up the house. We had like a celebrity chef situation yeah. and multiple vendors coming together just to put a kind of a nice thing together for realtors to attend. And... They really cooked like risotto and shrimp and onion, and I was on my all fours like mopping. <laughs> it's staged, you know. It's vacant. It's a, a listing in Point Loma, and I was cleaning floors at about six forty-five this morning, and just because I want to leave it better than I found it, you know. Yeah. And he has showings and stuff, yeah. stuff like that today. So, but wow. it was good. It was a good time. She yeah. definitely persuaded me. To do that. How, how looking at? Because you work with a lot of real estate agents, right? Both of, you, of course, you guys do. With, with yourself, Haley, growing up in a family where your mom was a real estate agent, how do you, how's your view of real estate agents changed? Well, my mom's actually a lender. So, oh, okay, okay, okay. so that's her view. Okay. My dad's been a realtor since 74. Yeah, okay. yeah, so his dad's been a realtor. My mom's been a lender. Um, you know, really my view is Ryan and I just love helping people. We don't really have any kind of 
I don't have a view really on real estate agents other than, you know, grinders, hustlers, workers, the ones that are working are getting the production and we love to be able to help out with the agents and really help them and watch them grow. So I don't really so have... You feel free to let loose. You don't, you don't, you don't have to hold back. What, no, what, I what, mean... What, what, I, I don't know. What would Everyone, you say? I don't so really... bright and shiny. Everyone's perfect. It's fantastic. No, oh, God, no. Oh, what's your perspective not. on angels? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, was really, like, mean... well, okay, for you, Ryan. Okay, so you grew up in the family. Okay, your your dad was in the field, and now you work with them. Not in any field you do. It doesn't matter real estate. It doesn't matter lending. It doesn't matter what it is. Everyone's not created equal. No. Uh-uh. Right? There's some people that are going to put a little more effort in. There's going to be some people that know a little more, so on and so forth. So being from the outside looking in, growing up in that, and then now actually seeing a variety of different, 100 different people on a weekly basis yeah what's your perception how has it changed well i mean there's no mystery that there's a huge turnover in real estate agents you know something to the tune of 40 percent a year new realtor mm-hmm. crop coming in and but the old guard the top five percent i'd yeah. say tend to be the same names you see mm-hmm. over and over again i don't think that's a mistake yeah success leaves clues right mm-hmm. and when you have consistency and consistent outreach and a little bit of fire and some grind and some grit in you i think and that goes across the board in sales but especially in real estate then you will rise to the top because mm-hmm. the biggest divide that we both see whether it was in her mom or my dad or current realtors we work with is the divide between theory and execution yeah and most agents wallow all day long in theory they go to Tom Ferry Mike Ferry whoever Ferry Brian Buffini and they hear a lot of theory and it makes them excited and it motivates them but they never cross the divide to execution and just start doing Mm -hmm. so you need Mm -hmm. to stop thinking and start doing is my main advice to most of the realtors whether you did six year deals last year or you did 106 deals last year there are certain fronts in your business that you're not executing on or your postponing or procrastinating you just you know nike didn't say just ponder it just ruminate it it's like, just do it right i don't know if that would be a good sales right yeah just ponder it you just know? think about it think, <laughs> think about, about it, it. Well, why don't you just think about buying my product <laughs> i mean we're here and it's now and you don't have to worry about tomorrow and you can't change yesterday so just mm-hmm. do it you yeah. know and guess what you're gonna screw it up and you're gonna do an autopsy and you're gonna course correct and you're gonna go out and you're gonna screw it all up again but if you're not screwing it up if you don't have a pile uh, failures as high as the ceiling in here, then you can't have any success at all. It's prerequisite to success is failure. Yeah, no, I, I, I can agree with you more. Uh, for people that aren't in the actual real estate field, lending field, in this kind of field, they probably don't have an understanding of the process of, of title, especially for myself in every transaction, you have a choice of what title company you're going to use, right? And sure. even kind of a title, title rep. So in this market, it's been usually the sellers will probably pick it. Sometimes the buyers will pick it, the, the owner or the seller, whatever it might be. So you have to get your name out there because reality is there's not a lot of advertising on TV and computers, whatever it might be, of differentiating one title company to the next title company, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So how have you been able to build your database of, of people that go, when they think of title, they think of Ryan and Haley? And Mm-hmm. Yes. You want to start on that one? Well, I think, you know, we've definitely doubled down on videos, doing that a lot more. We, personal branding is huge. We we really just show up every single day, and I think that is what has opened people's eyes a lot, is they just realize that we're here every single day. We have our phones on us. We're always answering emails. We're showing up. We're doing our calls every day, and I think that's really kind of been our success tool is just making sure we're here every day and making sure we're showing up and we – we're here and doing what we are supposed to do with our systems that we have in place, and that's kind of how we've grown our success. I heard, I think it was yesterday or this week at least, <clears throat> your vibe determines your tribe, mm-hmm. right? So we grind. We yeah. are constantly looking for growth. We prospect like our faces off only every day, <laughs> right? So it's no wonder why we're in a room with you. Yeah. You prospect your face off every day. You're a workout junkie. You're, you're committed. Yeah. We are deeply committed to the process. And that process, I mean, title is apples and apples. Yeah. It's who you work with. Yeah. And it matters. And if you have worked with a rep that has high aspirations and runs his business like a business and shows up like a pro, then you have a higher chance of that reflecting on you in a good light and so it's careful who you choose as your strategic business partners we Mm -hmm. show up we grind so we attract grinders and Mm -hmm. we 
you know, like to think that we win, so we tend to attract winners too. And I think that your vibe determines your tribe, man. And when you have putting out an energy of positivity, of like, I'm not counting every single deal. Did I get this? Did I get that? Micromanagement. Mm -hmm. We just say, let's go out and win it together. And yeah. here's how we've done that with other people. We think we can do it with you. And some people are in, and some people are out. And so what? Next, you know? Mm -hmm. That's no. how we treat it. Well, no, I, yeah. I, I totally agree. It, the grind is is consistent. The grind is daily, and. You've been doing it for such a long time, you know. Maybe, you know, Haley, maybe not as long as Ryan, but you both <laughs> have been doing it for like a good amount of time. Anyone can can run, but it matters in what direction you're going to run, right? Yeah. So there had to be some kind of learning experience or struggles, or how did you learn and understand? Okay, how do I get that person's business, or how do I help this individual out enough, or give them enough information, or give the process, the escrow, enough information to get that future business, like? Yeah. Well, no, I definitely have had my share of adversity 2008, 9, and 10 most prominently. <laughs> but what I learned back then is that personality and style and likability is not scalable. That's a personality trait. Uh, systems are scalable. So I got into the core training with Rick Ruby, changed my life in 2011. I learned about making 50 to 80 phone calls a day, which led to a very robust and full schedule the following weeks and um, prospected like crazy. And I found that those systems were scalable because I could replicate it in an assistant, in a junior rep, in a team. And next thing you know, the numbers were just bonkers, you know? And, and it depersonalized it for me because I didn't have to show up and be on. I didn't have to be cute. I didn't have to be funny. I didn't have to be the life of the party. I just had to show up and hit these numbers and hit my business plan and the numbers would come back on the scoreboard the way I wanted them to look. Mm -hmm. So I really liked that. And so mm -hmm. I started running my business like a business and agents took notice. They're like, man, we see your production. We see how you're doing things. We see that we, if I want to have a meeting with you, I have to go through your assistant now. Like, talk to me about this. And we started implementing those systems in the businesses of my clients, and everybody's kind of won together for that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I can just say that I'm lucky enough to, I mean, Ryan's fine-tuned his business almost perfectly to a T, and I mean, we're still course correcting. We still have things that we're working on together, but I was fortunate enough to come in w when Ryan had these systems, and I don't know a day without prospecting. I don't know a day without hitting my numbers, and thankfully, it's just really helped me as a person and me as a salesperson to know, like, okay, this is how it works. There's systems in place. It's not just about going out and passing out cups and pens and going to lunches and going to events. It's more about systems and showing up and making sure that you're hitting your numbers. Like you said, the more calls we make, we look up in two weeks and the more appointments we have. If we don't make as many calls that week, we look up in the week next week and we're like, oh shoot, we need to fill up more appointments. So it's really about the systems and thankfully I was able to jump on board with Ryan when he had those systems figured out and it's just really grown our team. Yeah. So, so you started, you said 20 years ago, right, Ryan? 2001, yeah. 2001, okay. So almost 19 years. June, uh, um, 19 years in June. Okay, so when did you bring on your first person? Um, 2011, when I got into the core, Rick Ruby will tell you to give away your inbox and then give away your calendar. So, it, it, so it took you 10 years? Or well, yeah, I worked this out there for about a decade, yeah. and then I was voluntold that I was going to the <laughs> I-5 Coastal Corridor in North County, where I knew I had less than no business. I had no relationships, mm -hmm. right? So that's when I took somebody on, and I wanted to add on to that final point, or the last point, <clears throat> excuse me. Empathy. Empathy is mm -hmm. the word. If I were, if you're in sales, if you sell widgets or pharmaceuticals or title or real estate, you've got to get out of self. It's critical. Yeah. Otherwise, how can you really bring solutions to bear that are meaningful in your custom audience or mm -hmm. in your target audience if you can't get out of self and into them? Empathy is huge. I know it's kind of trendy right now. It's radical candor, radical authenticity, and radical empathy via Gary Vee and the podcast <laughs> and stuff, for those of you who listen to Gary Vee. But, I mean, take the ego out back and shoot it and get into your customer, and you will start speaking their language, and then there's no sell. There's mm -hmm. just value, and they're ready for it or they're not. You yeah. know what I mean? So. So, no, that, that totally makes sense. With going back to the idea that you brought in a person, right? Because I bet you there's a lot of people even listening that – are on the track or future track of they're only a, a individual themselves, yeah. right? And they might be scared of bringing someone else on. It's scary. And, and, and so it it took you basically a kick a kick to the butt basically for you to actually bring someone on, correct? Yeah. Well, I, I kept listening to these audio coaching tapes and they talked about how people went from six figure to high six figure because of they could only be as big as their team. So when they went from single operator to team of five, their income went up 
uh, commensurately, right? Mm. So I think that that's what got me through the hump. The biggest, I mean, greatness is just on the other side of your fears, mm. okay? You've got to get outside of your comfort zone. Mm. The reason that you can't afford an assistant is exactly the reason you should get one. Yeah. Because when you can give away the ten dollar an hour work and go do the four hundred dollar an hour work, guess what? You're gonna get ma make a lot closer to four hundred bucks than ten, yeah. right? It's mm -hmm. just that simple. But you can't get there because you're forever doing counters and answering emails and mm -hmm. right. So you've got to give that some of that stuff away and then empower your people to do the same and build under them, which is what we're doing with her. Nice. So besides, so you had right there that that one kick where you got let go or told to leave however you want to describe it yeah and you went up north county yeah then it brought you down to well thankfully i had enough production to hire somebody on okay so, yeah so then what was what was the next step after that like with your last title company that you're with yeah was that the one that was in north county yeah yeah well i've been okay. in north county since 2011 so okay so so you were there 2011 till just a couple years or how long have you been with Tycor now? So, uh, 17. So December 2017. Okay, okay. So that was the next kick that happened right there. Well, no, after I had one, I said, holy cow, if one is good, two must be better, yeah. right? <laughs> so, but, and it, but one critical thing I will point out is yeah. you get time back when you're not answering 1,000 yeah. emails a day and yeah. answering 50 yeah. voicemails a day or whatever. You're giving that away. Yeah. So with that time, you can't go get like Manny Petties and golf and yeah. surf more. You've got to prospect more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because that's the four hundred dollar an hour yep. work I was referring to. So then I said, holy moly, I could use a junior rep to help me sell, and then yeah. we'll have this fulfillment partner on the inside. And Rick Ruby talks about LP one, LP two loan. It's it's in the mortgage space, but yeah. uh, it's it's scaling a business. Yeah. And so giving away, and I literally wrote down all the stuff I didn't like to do. Yeah. And that was the job description of my first assistant. So when you transitioned now to Tycor, uh -huh. right, was the, the process the same of bringing on new people, bringing on your systems, or was it? Did you change the systems because you already saw how you did it in two thousand eleven? I like to think I made it better. Okay. I was because one of the things I screwed up, and dude, you live and you learn. You're yeah. all gonna make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Small business owners make mistakes. I, I changed, I moved the goalpost on a couple of my teams in terms of how they got compensated. Yeah. And, you know, because you have to adjust and you read and react, and I, I messed it up and I fixed it. And then, so with this one, I was very clear on a couple things what I expected, mm. what their job was, and how they made money, mm. right? You've got to be, because this is how they're building their dreams, mm -hmm. starting a family in Katie's case, and, or, or getting married. And this is how you pay your bills, this is serious yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. If I have to pay you to be there, then you should know what earns you the most money. So I really, really got super granular and clear, like pristine clarity around those three issues, because they, not, they have to know what my expectations are. And then I gave them free reign on how to do it. So mm -hmm. I don't micromanage. I said, look, I need this done. I like this timetable. Now go do it your way. Right? And yeah. I think you appreciate it. Yeah. That. No, I really appreciate it. And that's pretty much how it's ran. Was, so was there ever a moment where you're like, I got to let go of this or whatever, parting the ways, right? Was there ever a moment where that happened or maybe there was a, a 08, 09, anything like that where you're just like, maybe title's not the, the spot for me. You know, in 2009 and 10, I did commercial leasing. Okay. So I, I alongside title, because yeah. from one year to the next, I had about a 65% pay cut. Oh, you know, wow. Because you had the mortgage meltdown. You just didn't have mm -hmm. the volume of transactions. Yeah. So I still had two babies and a mortgage and a wife looking at me like, hey, are we eating this month, you know? And <laughs> so I just started making 100 dials a day to people whose leases were expiring and started showing. Because it didn't conflict, really, with what you do. You yeah, work yeah. with buyers and sellers. You didn't really do leases. Yeah. The majority of my clients didn't do leases. Yeah. So it was a way I could make money that wasn't multi-level marketing, which I tried and failed miserably. Yeah. <laughs> and so did you know that you were going to get back fully into the title later on? After I felt, I always there? felt it. There yeah. was a time I did a really gnarly deal that was like 80 grand in commission. And I was like, hmm, I had no business in this deal. It was like an eight year term for like, I don't know, 12,000 square feet in La Jolla. And my broker did the whole deal. And I looked at the commission, I'm like, dude, maybe this is it. And then, but then it started picking up in 2011 and 12. And, and I, knew, I mean, I love people. I love who I worked mm -hmm. with. I still had a vast book of business. So I just focused 100% back on title. What about, what about you, Haley? You've been with Ryan for how many years? I've been with Ryan for a year. A year. A year. I was in title, though, for about three, four years prior to that. 
So, so in that last year, how many times do you say, forget this, I'm leaving this guy? Never. No. I, don't, I If anything, I've probably told him more times, get used to me because I'm sticking with you forever. <laughs> <laughs> so I've told him multiple times, like, you better get used to me because I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so I don't think I've ever, I mean, we, we are so passionate about what we do, and I really hope that shows to our clients that we really love being here, and we love showing up every day and helping them out. And so I have not once said... Maybe this morning when I woke up really tired, <laughs> and, but I didn't say I'm not doing this. It was maybe more of like snooze and want to sleep in for more. Like that was about it. But yeah. yeah. Well, we're giving her Monday off, so. <laughs> yeah, I get Monday. I get Monday off. A Memorial Day. <laughs> it, if if you were giving advice to maybe someone looking to get into the title field, basically building your competition, it, they could be competition in, in LA or or somewhere else. Maybe not direct competition. But if you're if someone listening right now and they're like, you know what, this sounds fun. I like talking to people. I like helping people out. What would be the advice you'd give them? I would hone your craft and mm -hmm. title's title, right? So I would get into the solution for your audience. Like I study how to help you become a better realtor, better closer, convert at a higher clip, etc. That is getting out of self and into mm -hmm. audience. I would say start there because if you're likable, if you can sell, that's just a numbers game. But you need to get into solution and bring relevant conversations and solutions to your audience. What would you say? I mean, we hear so many times a day, like, actually bringing value. And that's – it's easier said than done. No. You know, there's so many things that you can say bringing value. But as Ryan said, I mean, we study – the agent's issues and we bring solutions to those. So we're in the trainings, we're in the Mike Ferry, we're in the Tom Ferry, we're in the Rick Ruby, we're seeing everything that's working, all the systems and structures. We're working with some of the top agents in San Diego that have their systems down and we bring those solutions to agents and really empathizing with them and getting out of self. So to finish this off, what's next for you guys? Well, I mean, expansion. We bring Shelby mm -hmm. on on the first yeah. of the month. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. It was hard. Uh, we were really, really looking at getting another salesperson, but we have another fulfillment partner, which is an assistant to Katie. So more bandwidth, which mm -hmm. gives, uh, enables us to go out and make more calls mm -hmm. and more sales and bigger targets. Going to be dragging this ones to Caravan, seeing how it works out. <laughs> <laughs> caravan. Do they still do those? <laughs> I've only gone to three Caravans. Yeah, see, I'm my cup of tea either. Two minutes one. I know, we're going to test out the waters because now we'll have more free time to go out and sell more. So we're going to just kind of split test some things out, see what works, what doesn't. I mean, I think people like us when they see us. So we'll, well see. We'll, we'll, we'll see what the we'll, feedback is. We'll yeah, see. Yeah. Come on, America. <laughs> so if, if someone's uh, looking to become a real estate agent, looking to get a title, looking, or is a real estate agent, how would they reach you guys? What would be the best way of reaching you guys just to get your input into the to the San Diego market? Or I mean, RyanLipsy.com. Also, the Facebook business page has all of our contact. Mm -hmm. You know, um, what's the Facebook business page? Ryan Lipsy team. Ryan Lipsy team. Yeah, yeah, that would probably be the best way because we're both on that. Okay. So yeah. I mean, even if you type in Ryan Lipsy in Google, it yeah. will pull up our YouTube channel, our Facebook, our. Everything. What, everything, yeah. And then we'll have all of our contact information. We're not hard people to find. <laughs> no, I mean, you can call me at 619-454-9366. But if you're thinking about getting in the title, call me because we you know, are looking, we're, we're always looking for good talent, especially in the North County region <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> well, there we go. So all you entrepreneurs, everyone that's even thought about title, thought about real estate, thought about just list, talking to someone that, that's really hungry and, and motivated in their passion, you're going to want to look them up. Ryan Lipson and Haley, I appreciate you guys. Hopefully, everyone listening got some great information. And uh, please subscribe, tell your friends, and hopefully you really liked it. Thanks, Thanks. Vinny. Thanks, Vinny. Thank you for listening to The Road to Growth, Success of an Entrepreneur. Please like, subscribe, and stay connected. Visit www.vinnysd.com. Yeah, I created a website. Hope to see you again next week. Team Vinny SD, signing off.